Hi everyone, it's Heidi. Welcome back to my channel, My Reading Life, and I'm here today to film a video about my President's Reading Challenge. Uh, one of the commenters on uh, one of my previous videos had asked if I would mind doing a little explanation of my Presidential Reading Challenge and um, maybe recommend some books uh, that I've read that I've found to be good examples of presidential bios. So I figured I would do that. So you can see here behind me, this is my shelf of um, presidential biographies that I've read so far, and we'll be discussing some of these. But before we get into that, I should explain exactly what the presidential reading challenge is. So this is a challenge where you read a biography of each president um, of the United States in order. Uh, and I started this probably, it's been well over five years ago now. Um, I used to be really active on a website called Library Thing. Some of you may have heard of it. It's another sort of like a Goodreads type um, social media for books uh, type website. It's more of a library cataloging um, website, but it had an active um, forums on the site that I got really involved in five or six years ago. Um, I'm no longer actively involved on library thing, but one of the things that I got interested in while I was participating in those forums was the President's Reading Challenge. And I decided that I didn't know an awful lot about each of the individual presidents, and it would be a good way to learn about them, not only learn about the individual presidents, but to learn more about U.S. history, which I don't know an awful lot about, it hasn't ever been an area that I was particularly interested in. So, um, I got started, and the very first book that I read was this one. Um, and this is the Ron Chernow biography of George Washington. And you can see it's a wicked chunker. Um, and this was an excellent way to start off the reading challenge. If you're looking for a good biography of George Washington, um, you can't do much better than this one, I think. There's lots of books written about George Washington, but this is a very thorough biography. And I feel that Ron Chernow treats his subjects very um, uh, in a non-biased fashion. Um, but do be aware that they are highly detailed and they take you through the president's entire life. So this book is probably around 900 pages. The Grant biography that I just finished from him is 965 pages. And this one was 817 pages, um, not including the notes. So very thorough but very interesting um, and then I also have to highly recommend for um, President John Adams the David McCullough biography this is probably I don't know if it's my absolute favorite but it's right up there if it's not um, David McCullough just writes excellent um, historical nonfiction you know I just read the um, his book about the Panama Canal and loved it. This is an excellent book um, and is very readable, very engaging. Uh, he, David McCullough, not only talks a lot about John Adams and his life and his thinking about uh, democracy and the Republic, but he also details his relationship with Abigail Adams and their marriage and relationship was just a beautiful thing. It really was. And I really very much enjoyed learning more about both of them. Um, I also, the next one I read was John of uh, Thomas Jefferson, and that I read the John Meacham biography um, of Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power. This is a fairly recent release. I think it came out right around the time I was starting my project. Yeah, this came out in 2012. Um, and this is another really great biography. John Meacham uh, has written several presidential type biographies or biographies of um, U.S. historical figures, and he is, he's really good at what he does, too. Um, the next one, of course, is James Madison, and this gives me a chance to talk about a series of books that you will encounter if you start reading about U.S. presidents, and that is this, the American President series. Um, there's a few authors that write in this line. This is Gary Willis. I have um, some from Ted Widmere, Gail Collins, John D. Eisenhower, Michael Holt, and there's others that write um, for this series. But these are just short biographies, um, and they're very um, 
they're very to the point they're very factual they're not they don't go into the broader narrative they don't detail every aspect of the president's life but if you're just looking for a quick um, overview that's extremely factual this US or uh, American president series is a really good place to go and the other thing is they're you know they're only like not even 200 pages this this one on um, James Madison is is less than 200 pages it is 164 pages so if you don't want to make the investment of time that it takes to read these you know six seven eight nine hundred page biographies this is is an excellent way to go and it does give you that um, overview of uh, the president's life and it's a good place to start too if you don't know a lot about the president and then you can read on you know it gives you a place to start and then you can find other other books to read on about that about that particular person um here's another good author to uh to look at if you're reading presidential biographies this is harlow giles unger and this book is about james monroe it's called the last founding father james monroe and a nation's call to greatness um harlow Giles Unger has written a couple of different uh, presidential biographies as well and um, while he's not um, he's not as an accomplished a writer I would say as you know your Ron Chernow's and your David McCullough's he is um, very capable and does a nice job uh, with his writing um, yeah he wrote John Quincy Adams as well so he wrote my John, James Monroe and then he also wrote my um, biography on John Quincy Adams that I read and John Quincy Adams is quite an interesting character of course being the son of John Adams and you know being raised basically in American royalty um, you know founding father royalty he uh, had a very strong opinion about um, public service and how he could serve his country and he, he was kind of a he was kind of a grouch you know but he did amazing things at a very young age you know I believe if I remember correctly he um he served yeah he was served as an minister to six different countries and a secretary he was a secretary of state um and as well as being a president and then he after he was president he went back to being a congressman if i remember correctly um so he was really a fascinating character and really uh had um had lived and breathed his father's belief in public service and what it meant to be an american citizen um and then i uh i was so interested in uh John Quincy Adams that I ended up reading another book about him. This is Mr. Adams Last Crusade. John Quincy Adams Extraordinary Post-Presidential Life in Congress. This one's by Joseph Whelan and this details exactly what it says. After um, John Quincy Adams was president, you know, he went on to become a very important congressman and uh, I just had to read more about him and that's been the case with with many of these presidential biographies, you know, I read the biography and then I, I went on to read um, other historical books about that time frame. It's not here in my collection with my presidential biographies, but I did read a book about, um, well, I haven't gotten there yet in my, chron my chronology here, but no, it was after Thomas Jefferson, I think, I read a book about um, Lewis and Clark. Yes, they, I couldn't think that Lewis and Clark, and because I was really fascinated with the whole idea of exploration of the West, and t and Jefferson was big on it was big on that. Um, another popular author of presidential biographies is Robert V. Ramini. Um, he wrote this one, The Life of Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was a piece of work, I'll tell you. Um, he has the uh, the non um, accomplishment of being the president that uh, removed the uh, was it the Cherokee Indians and it was the Trail of Tears and all that um, so he was not very um, heroic figure after I read this book but he was a fascinating figure so that was an interesting one as well oh, get the slip back in here so there have been some duds as far as uh, these biographies go 
Um, this one about John Tyler wasn't very interesting. This is um, John Tyler, the accidental president by Edward P. Crapple. Um, I wouldn't recommend this one necessarily, but there aren't a lot of books written by John T about John Tyler. He's the um, first vice president to become the president on, upon the death of an incumbent, and he um, sided with the Confederacy in 1861, so he has the, you know, not great um, legacy of being a traitor to his country. Um, this book on James Polk, uh, also not super exciting. This was by Walter R. Bornman. I would not recommend this one either. Um, I think sometimes I wanted to get a more in-depth look at the president than these short, um, you know, American president series would give me. But I think sometimes you're just better off going with the short, uh, the short biographies because, and just getting the, the facts and then trying to find a, a historical nonfiction that just talks about the time period, not necessarily only about the president. Because some of these lesser known presidents, um, they just really isn't much, you know, there wasn't a really good biography to choose from. Um, this, I did read two books about Lincoln so far, um, but I have to definitely recommend this one, A. Lincoln by Ronald C. White Jr. This was really good um, and very thorough book about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he, I mean, of course, Abraham Lincoln, one of the heroes of our country. Fascinating, fascinating to learn about this man who was self-educated, self-taught, um, and who had much different views um, on things like slavery before he became president. Not necessarily before he became president, but earlier in his life as to later in his life. He really had progressed in his thinking about um, liberty and freedom and all of that. So this was a really good. I can definitely highly recommend that one. Um, another dud was this one. Oh, I don't even know why I'm keeping this one. I guess just to be thorough and to have, you know, a copy of, of something for Andrew Johnson. But this one was probably the worst um, presidential biography I've read. This is the book on Andrew Johnson by Hans Trefus. Trefaus. Not really sure how you pronounce that. I'll just put it up there for you to see. Um, Andrew Johnson was a dud of a president anyway. He was terrible. Um, it was too bad that Abraham Lincoln, not only it was too bad that he got assassinated, but it was too bad that this is the joker that became president afterwards. And that's the one thing that I will say about this president's reading challenges. Whenever I get to feeling too bad about our current political situation here in the United States, some of this presidential reading has really helped me feel better about it because most of these presidents have been bad in some way or another. Um, there are very few that were perfect throughout their lives or throughout their presidencies, and some of them have been com just completely awful, and Andrew Johnson was one of them. And In fact, Andrew Johnson was the original Trump. He was Trump before Trump was born, I'll tell you. Um, and then, of course, the very last one that I finished, um, just finished it yesterday, and this is another Ron Chernow. This is the Grant biography that I've been working on since last November. Um, this book was awesome. I know it took me a long time to read, but that's because it's such a huge book. I didn't take it out of the house, so I only was able to read it in the evenings or on the weekends, and there were periods of time where I, I stepped away from it to read other things, so I didn't read it straight through by itself. But that's fine because um, it's easy to follow. It's easy to put it down and come back to it. It's very detailed, um, very detailed. And especially uh, the, the years during the Civil War when Grant was the general um, and leading up to him becoming the general, he didn't start out as a general. It was very detailed with names of other military people and names of battles and how many people were killed. And, and all of that could get a little tedious, but the chapters on his presidency and then his post-presidency were amazing. Grant is such a fascinating figure because we lionize him as the hero of the, you know, the Union. He was the, the, the great liberator of, um, of African Americans in America. You know, he was the general that freed the slaves. And he was absolutely, um, committed to freedom for black people in America. 
but he also was extremely naive and he was led <laughs> into doing things because he believed in people so much that he never wanted to believe um, badly about anyone that he considered a friend and it ended up leaving him penniless at the end of his life um, because he had believed in a young man and invested all of his life savings into a financial venture that was basically a scam and got his children involved in it and other family members so um, for a guy who was such a brilliant military mind and a really really good president um, for the most part although there was some scandals that did plague his presidency most of the time he the scandals happened because he wouldn't was unwilling to believe badly of people he always believed the good in people um, and this is the only biography that I've read of a president in which I cried in the last chapter I mean I knew Grant died so <laughs> but the way that this ended he was just such an honorable man and he just was so caring about his wife and his family and um, I just cried at the end it was so touching uh, so can't recommend this one highly enough so that's the president's reading challenge um, I'm on to Rutherford B Hayes next I haven't picked out the biography that I'm going to read yet but um, I'll be doing that in the next uh, little while before I before I read my next presidential biography I have this book that I got for Christmas these truths the history of the United States by Jill Lepore that I'm gonna read first um, so that's gonna be my basically this is another chunker so it's gonna be my next bedside uh, history book that I'll be working on for the next coming uh, weeks and months and then I'll move on to Rutherford B Hayes afterwards so if you have any suggestions for Rutherford B Hayes um, he's another you know, he was a one-term president and there's not doesn't seem to be very many uh, biographies written about him. I've only found three or four so far. But if you have a suggestion, please uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any other questions about the President's Reading Challenge, feel free to leave those down below as well and I'll try to answer them. Um, and I hope that this has been helpful to everyone. Talk to you later.